Yeah, I'm, not, I'm a front here, front here. I'm from Saskatchewan, which is why my last name might look a little weird to all you. Um, and so I couldn't even get much of Gary's presentation. I just got stuck on penises in Rome, and which is actually what I was going to do my presentation on. But I decided I'd stick with eyes, and I've got. Um, yeah, we'll just. And um, whenever you're ready, we're going to do this. Okay, so um, this is a still from Wish and Andalou, which is a 1926 uh, avant garde film by Lubinwell and um, Salvador Dali, which I mean, you might recognize. What's going to happen is her eyes actually going to be split in half, and this is going to actually be like a metaphor for what happens in film, this kind of a split vision that happens on. So between this image and the next one, which should hopefully come any second now, uh, that's Rear Window, uh, 1954, <laughs> that's James Stewart with the big ballet camera going on. And between Unchin and Lou and Rear Window, this is kind of like a big governing metaphor for what happens um, in film. Um, if you don't know this, uh, Rear Window is often uh, theorized as being like a big metaphor for film and what happens with James Stewart, he's watching out his back window, his legs broken, he can't do anything, but he just has a Whatever. This is from Psycho, uh, from 1960, another Alfred Hitchcock film, and um, this is a really famous shot where Janet Lee was just killed by uh, Norman Bates, we don't know that, but she was killed. And this is um, what's happening is her eyes spinning one way, the water's going another way, it's a still image, and it's like death, and all the still imagery, while the eye is still, and it's all just like, it's totally different from this one, which is from La Jetée, which is a 1963 Chris Marker film. It's a, it's a short film. And it's just still images for the whole 30 minutes, except for here, which you can't tell because it's a still image, but it's actually a moving image, and her eyes are blinking. Um, so it's kind of funny, but this is actually the only moving image in the whole film, so it's kind of a counterpoint to Psycho, where that's just a big still image. And here is Hell 9000 from um, 2001 A Space Odyssey, 1968 Stanley Kubrick film. Um, and this is like that all-perceiving eye that kind of the camera is, it's often theorized, especially in the psychoanalytic tradition in film. And Hal just sees everything on the spaceship. If you haven't seen this, it's like a really great like space opera, and it's really like just that. There's a lot going on. Um, another film uh, from uh, 1971, a Clockwork Orange, and this is um, Alice Lard played by Malcolm McDowell, and he's watching a film here, and a really gory, violent, sexual film, and they're feeding him this drug, and they're forcing him to watch this. So when he watches these violent films, he has this like visceral reaction where he throws up, and he can't enact violence himself, and so. Uh, here is Videodrome from uh, 1983. It's a Canadian film, David Cronenberg. And the, this whole film is premised on vision. Uh, James Wood here, he's being um, inundated with this like cancer thing called Videodrome that makes him see hallucinations, and he's hallucinating that this TV's alive and living, and those are the lips of Deborah Harry from Blondie. It's in this film. It's a great film. You should watch it. It's on Netflix. Um, <laughs> this is um, from The Dead Zone, um, another David Cronenberg film, also from 1983. This image has actually nothing to do with what I would talk about in The Dead Zone, but it's really kind of like suggestive and graphic. Um, Chris, the Dead Zone's book, uh, this character played by Christopher Walken, who can like, see people's futures just by touching them. And so, um, anyway, this is actually not even an eye at all. This is um, the GoldenEye satellite from the James Bond film GoldenEye, and I'm running out of ideas. The video game was cool, right? You guys all like the video game from 95 or whatever? I don't know. First, that's all I had to go with that one. Also, metaphor for communism and something. <laughs> God, no, I got nothing. There we go. Scream from 1996, uh, the Wes Craven film, which isn't really, this isn't really eyes going on, your eyes are closed, but this opening scene with Drew Barrymore, she's being watched, and you know, he asks her, do you like scary movies, right? And so it's kind of like that, that whole thing where instead of us watching movies, like, the movies are kind of watching her because this scream, this ghost face, he is that kind of that all-encompassing, that, that whatever. This is from um, Lost Highway, the David Lynch film from 1997. I actually fell asleep watching this, so I haven't seen it at all. And I actually have, this is near the end of the film, um, where this creepy motherfucker comes in, so my friend, um, and he's filming Bill Pullman and his wife, and it's really weird at the beginning of the film, Bill Pullman and his wife, Claire Richard Arcade, are getting these tapes of them sleeping, and we don't know how. Um, and this is from the sixth sense, obviously, he sees dead people, like how much more obvious can I get when we're just talking about vision and film, you know, of course, you know, from 1999, the M. Night Shyamalan film, the only good film he's ever done. And, uh, and I mean, when I saw it when I was nine, I really didn't even like it, but um, I was nine. And what else have we got? Ah, X-Men from 2000, the Brian Singer film, of course, a big metaphor for just, like, gay everything. I can say that because I am gay. And, uh, and so he's a cyclops here, right? The mutant eyes and, you know, vision here can actually, like, kill you if you don't, if you're not careful, if you don't control it. And, um, of course, he has this big love affair with Jean Grey, and we've all seen X-Men, right? Who hasn't seen X-Men? It's great. It's the ring. Ah, the ring. The ring itself is an eye, really, if you think about it. Because as soon as you see the ring, it sees you, it knows you saw it, and then he calls you on the phone seven days, and you die. Right? And so the movies can kill you. 
is kind of the whole metaphor of the ring, and kind of the whole one of that governing logic behind like Unshin and Deleuze, right, where it slices the eye. And this is from Pan's Labyrinth from 2005, 2006. Uh, the Guillermo del Toro film from Mexico. I don't really have anything to say about this image except it's really cool and I really like this scene in the movie. <laughs> and if you haven't seen it, you should just watch it for this scene because this guy's eyes are actually on a plate and then um, when the girl steals food, he puts the eyes in his hands and like, it's creepy as hell. <laughs> um, this is actually a shot from um, The Diving Bell and the Butterfly, uh, the Julian Schnabel film from France from 2007. And this is, how do I explain this concisely? Um, this is what the main character sees, and the whole film is shot in that first-person perspective film uh, thing, except for a few flashbacks. And so everything in this image is what, the whole film is just his vision, so our vision becomes the character's vision. This is a cool shot from There Will Be Blood, and what's going on here is that David Bordwell on his blog, uh, he's a film critic, posted this image, and all these little circles here are where you're looking right now. And the bigger the circle, the longer you're looking there. And that was the idea, so the guy who did this, um, he put little rapid eye movement measure things in front of your eyes, and we measure where you were looking in this scene. This is from Paranormal Activity from 2007. It's a really great film. I really think it's a bad rap, but it's really cool when you think about it because here's that camera eye from, you know, um, we're a window, and here's you. That's you. That's really you. That's really all that Paranormal Activity is about. It's about us watching a movie and creating a movie and creating all these self-mythologizing autobiographical stuff. This is blindness. This is actually a movie about not seeing anything. Um, this is from 2008, the Fernando Morales film from... Uh, Canada, Brazil, and Japan. It's kind of a co-production. And that's Julianne Moore, and she's the only woman you can see in this world um, gripped by a, a white blindness. Um, and it's a really kind of a terrible film, but the novel's really good, and uh, I don't know if you'll say it. The last image here is from Sinister from 2012, which is a surprisingly great film. I saw it on Halloween, thinking it was going to be total dog shit, but it's great. And the idea here is that it's kind of like The Ring. You watch this movie, and this here, this, uh, this demon whose name I can't remember, he knows you've seen it, and then um, he basically gets your kids to kill you. And these are all the kids. <laughs> anyway, those are all the kids who killed them, and they end up being in the screen. And that's all I've got.